Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast. Uh, and this may be our very first for us. Uh, we're outside. You may hear the plane overhead now, as a matter of fact. We're outside uh, for this podcast, and what beautiful weather we're having here in North Carolina. And I'm here with Erez. And uh, Erez, do you just want to introduce yourself, uh, your company, and maybe just a little bit about an overview of what you do? Sure. So thank you for having me here. Uh, yeah, definitely great weather here in North Carolina. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, so I'm Ares. I'm based in uh, the Raleigh area of uh, North Carolina here, and I developed this uh, solution for garage ventilation system. So okay. basically it's a self-sustained kind of unit that operate using solar power uh, to ventilate those uh, garage, shed, barns, rooms. Uh, they're fairly either remote or a garage door is moving. And what I came up with is basically a combination of three fans producing about 630 CFM, which is powerful enough uh, to get some air movement in the room itself. And we found out that um, a lot of the garages shed, they they just standing air over there. So I really came up with this through uh, sitting in the garage with friends and like, wouldn't that be nice to have? And we look at the window in the garage and we say, that's a good spot to put something in there. Uh, and just kind of back and forth, just uh, played around with different, uh, you know, concept ideas and prototype <coughs> and mm-hmm. really just came up with that uh, unique solution here. So, yeah. Well, so what would you what would you say sort of the the motivating factor behind, you know, you're talking to these guys and you're like, hey, you know, we need some fresh air in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that kind of the thought? I mean, pretty much because I, I spend a lot of time in my garage, right? Whether I'm doing some woodworking, I, I you know, some uh, trim in around the house, all kind of uh, honey do list type <laughs> activities that I got going on. And I really actually enjoy it. So I build like a big dining room table, a coffee table. Uh, so I like playing with that. And, you know, between the dust, between just things that are sitting still in the garage or odor from kids type of sure. wet clothing or shoes or stuff like this. Um, I, I like to use my garage quite a bit. So, and as I walk around and you drive around through different neighborhoods and garages and sheds and you see them just piling up boxes on boxes and just everything stays over there. And, you know, I, I'm kind of trying to look for, that's another room in the house. Why not use it better? And I think during COVID, it doesn't matter how big your house is, you could always use this other room, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's your main cave, whether it's your um, workshop that you do, whether it's a podcast that you Mm -hmm. do, right? I mean, it's just like another room that you do your own thing in there and you can clean it up like a pharmacy or you can have it roughed up to, to a real workshop over there. So that kind of what drove it to, to have, hey, there's another good room that I'm just not using, so let's make it livable. I think about that with, like, sheds just in general. So many garages are being used not for their vehicles. Yes. They're being used with, you know, so many Christmas boxes. Christmas decorations. Yeah, all that's in there. So, and, and then folks are saying, you know, hey, we, we might need to get a shed. I think it might be time to get a shed, which is, which is great. Uh, for our business, right? I mean, that's what we want. Um, How did you find the shed industry, just out of curiosity? Uh, So as I was uh, developing this uh, kind of solution, I talked to different companies and garage manufacturers and, um, you know, got different ideas and talked to different friends in neighborhoods and friends around that would say, hey, this is what I'm coming up with and where it can use. And uh, some people say, hey, you know, know, I bought a shed and it's really humid it's really hot in there and that could that work in the shed and could that be in there and from that i basically uh researched a little bit more about sheds and i found out this uh trade show was my first trade show to attend in uh, greenville south carolina Mm -hmm. it was a a shed and garage and carport um Mm -hmm. trade show there and i was amazed to see how big that industry is i was you know, kind of amazing to see this is an industry by itself, aside from the garage door, this is an industry that people um, are, are buying sheds, they're using, they're utilizing them, they're making it really part of their home. And um, through that show, I found out that people are not using it only to store their stuff. They're using it as kind of that workshop, that kind of another office for them uh, to reach. And because it's maybe 
too far in your backyard or, you know, you don't want to run like actual permits for wiring and, and power and all this. Solar solution is great uh, when it's off the grid type of uh, ventilation system for in there. So I just found this whole industry very, very fascinating. Um, and it, it, it's just great to see how people use it. Yeah, it's um, kind of surprising to people in the shed industry. Uh, it seems to be if you can recognize uh, a moment of time in the moment of time. It's easy to look back and say at, at, at X and at Y and at Z, these things happened in the shed industry or the automobile industry or mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Um, <coughs> but to recognize what's happening in the moment, I feel like is a little bit harder to do. And, and that seems to be where we're at. We're recognizing the growth yes, and the organization really uh, of the industry as a whole. Not everybody knows that you can have a shed in your backyard. Yes. Uh, you know, storage unit really is, is sort of still probably much larger than the backyard shed industry as a whole. So for people to want to come out, outside to the comfort of their home, have the shed there, ease of use. So they're surprised when they realize there's a shed hauler event every year. There's a shed, you know, manufacturing event. Uh, yeah. You know, there's trade shows surrounded with <laughs> yeah. all of these different. Yeah, it just kind of surprises you. And I'll tell you that hopefully it doesn't uh, tell too much about my age, but I think a lot about like before we had cell phones. Right. How people, if you ask people, how do we get along before we had cell phones or smartphones out there? Like nobody knows. Yeah. We never lived right before we had those smartphones out there. But today it's so much part of our lives that we cannot live without. Yeah. So it's the same thing kind of with that industry right now. People not knowing that what they can do with their shed, where they can take it to, to, to utilize their space and creativity. And I think we're at that stage right now. And that's kind of what set me in mind when I developed this solution. Ventilation right now is such a critical impact in our lives. We, we just take the air we breathe for granted. Mm -hmm. And you don't think about the, the complexity that there is to ventilate any room that you're in. So uh, this is very exciting times. Well, and with a shed, you see that, obviously. It's a very common uh, occurrence that you walk into a shed and it's not primary living space Correct. so you walk in it's hot yes you know it's musty it's 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 whatever and um like you said no one wants to run wires and <laughs> you know uh yeah. it's cost and it's dangerous or whatever it is but having something that's off-grid having something that's self-sufficient Yes. You, you know, that's a, there's a lot of value to that. Solar is becoming very popular. I mean, uh, the government's pushing, you know, right. uh, tax, tax incentives, yes. tax credits for solar, solar on your home. And so, so obviously there's a lot of infrastructure that's going on in the world of solar and green energies. And, uh, you know, I've not always been the biggest supporter of, of <clears throat> something like uh, the thought of green movement. Mm -hmm. you know yes. because it's different it's change and it's it's all these things and i mean i still love diesel mm -hmm. trucks and big yep. trucks and absolutely like four go. wheelers and all my all my stuff you know but the thing is uh it's a reality that i think at some point as renewable our our, our, our uh, resources that aren't renewable become limited yes exactly we have to think about you know different options and and, and not saying we go Completely. Completely. Yes. But something like this is uh, an example of the innovative uh, culture that's in our Correct. world now. And that's where it all starts because you don't have to change completely your life yeah. to, to be green energy. It starts with rooms like that garage or the shed or the barns or things that maybe you're not using them all the time. Your truck, you use it all the time. You rely on it for, for carrying your stuff. It, it's, it's a much more... Mm -hmm dependable type of solution for for the cars and the trucks out there but for your storage for your home you just don't need to think about it you put it on and you forget about it and yeah. then when you don't get the monthly bill to pay energy bill for this that makes it even sweeter so so let's talk about a, a little bit about the product itself 
Um, so what what's the name? So it's uh, the name of it is Zula. Zula. Zula is the name of the product itself. Okay. And Zula in Hebrew means chill. Chill. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Happened to be the name of my dog. Uh, I have a brindle Rottweiler there. Uh, not Rottweiler. Sorry. Uh, I have a, a brindle dog that that basically that's how we named her because okay. she was very chill. She was just sitting <laughs> out there was a rescue. Uh, <coughs> and Zula, like Z U L A. Z U L A. Correct. Okay. Yep. Zula. So that's the I name. got a lot of people. I'm gonna tell the Zula. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Zula out, people. Exactly. All right. <laughs> So I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's named Zula, the unit itself, which is the combination of that solar panel with fans that basically ventilates the solution itself. So it does have right now an on-off button there uh, for, I, I don't know why you would turn it off, but basically, again, because it's solar, it's fine to be working 24-7 or all year long to really ventilate that room that you put it in. So initially, what we kind of talked about is your thought was this going on garage doors. It's very simple as in, you know, you can do DIY installation. Exactly. Um, and, and so this could be for uh, an upsell or an after sale. Yes. <laughs> um, but this could also be, and we'll discuss that, some thoughts behind you know, even replacing ridge vent because, you know, the idea is you're trying to get clean air in, but also get movement. But tell me a little bit about how that works with the garage doors of shed manufacturers. Yes. Build a lot of garages. So, yes. And that's, uh, so I've been attending the, the Greenville, South Carolina trade show over there, which was great. A lot of feedback around the shed and it made it actually even more simpler to do the installation itself. Uh, so like I said, for the DIY uh, type solution it has those screws on the side that basically kind of adjusted again it was initially developed for the garage door replacing that window so all you need to do uh, is take out the screws that hold the window in place over there use the same screws to mount that unit back on and then you plug in the the solar panel and that's it so the installation on a garage door is very DIY, kind of simple. Take out the screws, put those screws back on with the Zula system, and you're done. From a shed component, it's even uh, simpler, I think, just because of that <coughs> combination to um, have it, whether it's the vent itself, that there's already a hole cut in there, and then you can mount those screws instead of from the back. You just put them from the front. The solar panel collect, connects the same way, and you're good to go. You let the sun do its magic. So on this unit, you have three fans, yep. total of three fans. And how, how does the operation on that work? So two of the fans, uh, so like I mentioned before, the, the three fans are very powerful. Although they look like a PC type uh, fan, those are very powerful. They produce a total of 630 CFM. Uh, for Compared to fans. a PC would be? A PC would create 38 CFM. Okay. So it's more, you know. Um, so... The, the two fans are blowing air into the garage, and there's one fan blowing air out of the garage. So what we created this is I tried to create an air circulation in the garage with more newer air coming in, right, in the garage into the shed itself. So um, in one of my experiments when I tried this, I, I bought, like, this one big fan, and I said, just suck all the air out of it, just take it out, and... Before I know it, within a few minutes, I couldn't open the door to get into the garage mm -hmm. because it created that suction in mm -hmm. that room. Uh, so I had to come up with a solution that basically circulates the air, create the right balance. So from 210 CFM on each of those fans, creating, again, that total of 630 CFM, there is a right balance to move new air into the garage and then pulling air out of the garage itself. So... Uh, that creates the right level of circulation. And depending on the size of the shed or the garage that you're putting it on, that's as much powerful you want it to be. I mean, and the, the idea is that you're moving this to lower the temperature in Correct. the room to uh, create new air. Uh, one of the things you were telling me that really um, I wouldn't have thought of in a million years is, you know, the, the stagnant air creates uh, a bed for allergy as well. Yeah, so I actually I found this through, um, again, going back to taking air as granted. 
Uh, I've researched online and throw di- so different articles by the government regarding air quality and there's for standing air. There's so much different type of allergens that are out there just from standing air, just if it doesn't move. And I was shocked myself to, to find out about it. So, uh, yes, keeping that balance of air and keeping that circulated, that's what keeps the air moving and prevents any of those allergens within building. Apparently, there is like this big, when you go into commercial buildings, there's much more uh, type of air ventilation that makes the air healthier to breathe Mm -hmm. uh so there's apparently there's a whole industry into i I just think there's endless possibilities and and i want to talk kind of more about the product before we get to those but whether it's you know uh gable vents Mm -hmm. but i mean i'm having an issue right now with um it's it's not a a bad issue but occasionally when we get a massive amount of rain i mean it's you know it's my home was built in 81 you know so I'm uh, just not getting really good uh, uh, airflow mm-hmm. underneath. So, I mean, it'll just stay, you know, yep. moist under there and humid for some time. And I'm thinking to myself, like, hmm, I'm looking at the size of these things and I'm going, <laughs> would this not work perfect for that little crawl space? Yes. Because I, I don't want to run something out there that I've got plugged in all the time. That's right. So, I mean, there's a million things going on in my mind. Tell me a little bit more about the product itself, Zula. I love yes. Zula. So you've got the three fans, you've got the on-off switch, you have the panel. Mm-hmm. How does how does this work? Uh, does the panel, um, you know, store up uh, a bunch of energy and and that's so, what keeps everything going? Or yeah. So the so after talking to different. Um, electrical engineer friends of mine that consulted this with the right amount of power i've selected to use over here a 30 watt solar panel it could range from 30 to 75 watt um, um what a panel and then based on the fan ampage that it actually uh, obtain that's the right kind of balance there to make sure that i can use enough power from one solar panel to operate those three fans and that's why this unit, which measures about um, 19 by 14, uh, that's about the size of this unit right now. And it, the solar panel, again, gives it enough power just to operate it, ventilate it, and going back again, creating that 630 CFM of all those three panels of uh, fans to make sure that it really creates that air circulation. So don't overcomplicate the solution itself. It's really yeah. a combination of a solar panel and fans it just have the right level of balance between pulling air out and pulling air into the garage or shed uh, that create that balance. And it's all housed in one unit that you basically use the same screws that you already had uh, to mount it in that hole that you have, whether it's the garage window, uh, whether it's the vent itself, any kind of hole that you have in that shed, the barn, the garage, it just fits right in and simple, uh, keep it simple basically. And and I think I I guess in my head if you know you just wanted to put this in the side of a gable, mm-hmm. uh, you could I mean you could cut this out very easily. Yes, exactly. You know, to replace a, a standard just louver vent that's just doesn't create anything. It's just simply there for the purpose of the the, the air exiting. I mean heat rises, mm-hmm. so everything's going up to the top. So that's why we put the ridge vents in the top. That's why we put the gable vents. Right, <laughs> but. It doesn't mean it's moving, right? No, just because it's um, it's rising. It's not rising. Moving, it's just yes. sitting there. So something to actually create that airflow. But everybody thinks, oh, got to plug a fan in. Got to do this. Got to do that. But if you have something that is self sufficient, yes, is the whole key. Yeah. You're, you're buying the longevity of the product, right? You're not just buying something that yes. keeps using energy. So it's just like, you know, I like to do a little bit of hiking sometime and you go through some trails and you see the water, right? So it tells you that standing water, don't Stagnant. use them, right? Yeah. But keep the one in the rivers that are keep moving, what those you can use analogy. to wash your hand. What a great analogy. Uh, so it's kind of the same thing that once you put it in there, it, 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 it just works by itself. Let the sun, let the daylight really do its work for this mm-hmm. and it just operates it. So, uh, yes, you... you the idea is to put it and forget about it kind of now focus on how you use that space for your own stuff so the panel 
sits on the outside. Correct. Basically quick connects. Correct. Um, so when you ship it, it ships together as two pieces. Yes. Um, you've got a video. You've got a tutorial video. It's on my website. Yeah. Okay. Mobino What's the solar solutions.com. Mobino, M-O-B-E-N-O, mm-hmm. solar solutions.com. So, and then you have a, a plug on the end. Correct. And the plug basically goes to the toggle switch and, uh, mm-hmm. real simple, but installation's pretty, pretty easy. 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Yes. You know, yeah, definitely for the DIY, for the person who hasn't used a whole lot of it, it's very easy as yeah. far as unscrewing and screwing back on there. So depending on how many screws you have, 10 or eight, just put them on and like you said, plug that in. A couple self-tapping screws basically go into the top, uh, of not penetrating the magnetic field, which is where you're, Yes. Energy. So comes this, from. yes, exactly. And this is for the outside. So you mount the solar panel right there. And it also protects it from any wind or rain that comes in, protects the little unit so no water really gets into. Uh, although that there is a protection over the garage door, over the shed mm-hmm. itself, there are protection that it's not a direct water leaking right into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it gives you that privacy uh, to protect it from any water coming in. What do you expect, like, life expectancy on, like, these panels and things like that? I mean, that's something they could just order very easily in, in the future, just a panel itself. Right. So I think right now the industry for uh, solar panel is still evolving a yeah. lot. Uh, the fans, for example, are rated to operate 80,000 hours, mm-hmm. which I, if I calculated, it's like eight, nine years if yeah. it's 24-7 operates. Yeah. Uh, the solar panel has the same thing, right? And because it's vertical there, uh, it basically doesn't require you to maintain it. So if you, for example, on the roof, because they're laying flat, uh, there's some companies I saw that they offer like a cleaning of the solar panel. Because this solar panel is, is angled uh, vertically, then the rain will just wash it right off. Mm-hmm. And that maintains that solar panel just by itself. So. Well, and air being a natural purifier really helps. Exactly. You know, and, and that's sort of what you're going for. So I, so my thought is uh, you're keeping mold down. You're improving the – so, I mean, buildings are typically, you know, what, uh, you know, wood and metal. Yes. You know, that's about the only thing you're going to see in them for the most part. There's probably some plastics that you see occasionally mm-hmm. here and there. But uh, generally speaking, I mean, uh, keeping any of that, whether it's wood, metal, plastic, it, it doesn't matter. Keeping any of that free of mold. And Correct. you do that by keeping the humidity down, keeping the air moving. Yes, uh, and it, mold grows everywhere. Yeah. Right? So it's pretty much, I've, I mean, I've seen it on concrete. I've seen it on different things that we just grows out there. So regardless to what your building is made of, uh, keeping that air movement just makes a whole lot of difference. And the, and the goal is to... Um, create that lower temperature as a good example. So I think of sheds and I think about all the products that uh, exist now, you know, uh, already uh, that maybe adhere to the, uh, to the building. Yes. uh, To try to lower the temperature or, you know, create a barrier, you know, from the sun and the heat. Um, But this does it a little bit different. This, this would allow your product cost to stay lower you yes. know, on your lumber or, or on the wood, but you could create something like this. You you could could you could consider replacing the gable vent on the on the end of the shed with this. Absolutely, and that's where I look for those manufacturers, those industry leaders within there, to to look at this, and they will tell me better than me as far as the application itself. Right? Yeah. They know sheds, they know garages way better than I do with this, and. The applications are really endless with this. When, when you have that air quality in mind, um, you can really put it anywhere in there. So depending however the size it fits, uh, again, I manufactured this here in North Carolina, Hillsborough, North Carolina. Uh, there's a local facility that's uh, uh, it's been ran in the family, and I, I really love it. It's a father and son operation. I just that's love great. their operation in there and they were able to work with me help with the design help with the different kind of structure of this to make it adjustable to any size window right so with that uh because i have right now some wider holes it's about two inches hole in each screw that's coming in and it, that's what makes it 
you know, it doesn't make that screw location fix. You can move it to whatever size that you sure. want. Sure, yeah. Uh, but working with those garage manufacturers, the shed manufacturers, the barns, um, like I said, they know better than me how the application would work as long as they're willing to offer their customers that solar or green energy type ventilation solution that that's an added value yeah. uh, for that the, the products that they're dealing with day by day no I, I i think it's great and i like your humility approach um because it, there'd be nothing worse than going in and saying this is the way to do it and how you have to do it <laughs> and you're taking the approach to say uh you're the you're the expert in that space right let me be the expert in mine and and you know you're you're the expert so what how would this work best the thing that comes to my mind initially and i'm far from a manufacturing expert so don't let me fool you here today uh but just between us two girls here yeah uh i would say if that was even down to you know maybe two fans mm-hmm. one in one out Yes. And maybe a smaller, smaller uh, version of it. Smaller version of it, you know, and maybe that even helps with price point, you know, if that's a concern yes. for a end user or, or someone. You know, I'm thinking to myself, like, that kind of replaces the gable vent. Mm-hmm. And right now, what the reason I love that about it is because there's so many cool things out there, like like the rampage door for, for the shed industry. You know, I I mean, I know it's it's been out a while now, Uh but I mean, I'm hearing about like these different products and I'm just finding these different products that uh, shedderize, you know what I mean? Rapid shelves, like a lot of these um, accessories after the fact, or they can be put on as part of the build Correct. or yes. they can be upsold yes. after or after sold. Um, so to me, I think it's exciting because you're just selling a, a box for storage. Mm-hmm. Okay. In general. Yes. But it's more than that. And and, and it isn't it supposed to evolve into right. you know, it used to just be a backyard shed and now you're seeing home offices and, and studios. Correct. And I think today, um and, and the reason I'm I'm looking at those subject matter experts is because today we get a lot of that need from that end customer. They maybe traveled around the world and they saw something in the halfway part of the world and they say, Hey, can you do that for me? Uh-huh. So my goal with this is as a, as a manufacturer for the shed, for the garage, is to offer this kind of product line to say, we're not only going to sell you a shed, but you're not going to think right now about the heat that it might get in in the winter, uh, in the summer, or, or the humidity in the winter. Let's have a green energy type solution to ventilate this because you know that that homeowner is going to go out later on and maybe going to buy a very expensive air condition to put in there. And that's just going to defeat the whole purpose. So by having those manufacturers educate their customer or be educated by their customers that are traveling and seeing different solutions out there, that takes them to a whole different level in that offering of green energy uh, of where I think we're going right now. No, I, 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 I like it a lot. And I, I think about the shed uh, door manufacturers and how some of them um, – uh, really service the self storage industry as well too, but so you kind of have about two windows mm-hmm. standard on the on the on the garage doors, the overhead doors that so you can you're actually considering doing a multi unit yes. kind of, and then also this, but who knows where maybe a a gable unit at some point exists, right? And it and it goes <coughs> down to to that size of that shed of yours, right? Or or, or that garage that you want, because again, like I said, I'm producing right now 630 CFM from mm-hmm. the one unit. Depending on what you use that room for, depending on how much of air quality you want, that's what determines to say, you know what, I'll put another unit of it. I put the eight windows in there. I'll put in every side, every uh, corner of the of the shed to make sure as the sun, as the daylight goes through the day, you have a full day operation of it. Uh, so it, like I said, the applications are really endless with this, but it's really focused on the size of the room, the size of what you're going to use that room. And that's what I'm trying to change. Let's Let's use that, that shed and garage spaces as an actual living space for you to do your own thing, whatever it is. Well, and you're seeing that so much with tiny homes and with finished out sheds, yes. uh, all of these things. I, a lot of people said tiny homes would be a fad. And, it, you know, I'm thinking, wow, I mean, at some point the fad has to end, but it just seems to be growing. 
I didn't get a chance to make it to the tiny home. Um, they have like an annual event in Colorado, and I, I didn't get a chance to go last year. I really wanted to. Um, I want to bring in more conversation about barn dominiums and tiny homes and things to the industry because we find ourselves as in shed guys, right? You're kind of cross one path into the next, and you don't know where one stops and one starts. You know, when you talk about garage building, yes. you know, it's ba- basically building a portable garage. Just you're building it on skids. Yep, it's just portables. The difference. Um, I love everything that you got going. What What's your hope? Is your hope to reach the manufacturers in the sense of a wholesale distribution model um, where they buy in bulk and then they can either resell, uh, you know, in retail or they can add it to their uh, line of sheds or, uh, you know, are you trying to sell to the dealers where they might try to sell to the end customer? What's your, what's your thoughts on all that? So, yeah, so, so with that, my goal with this is to take it to the wholesalers, the manufacturer, create, okay. create some of their product line with this as far as their offering. Like I said, they know about this industry way better than I do to go in and change that industry. But what I'm trying to do is complement their product offering today. Uh, if they would say, listen, I want to license this in a sense that this is going to have my my, my, my Joe Shed or whatever mm-hmm. Shed company manufacturers that you are, Absolutely, that could be part of your line to take it in there. And I'm thinking, you know, I think we have sun across the entire country over here. So anyone (laughs) in the country can really take this into creating their own line. Again, like I said, I produce it here in North Carolina. Uh Um, It's me running with this to to create this from from a prototype to an actual working unit. Uh, So my friends, my family, obviously every one of them got that system in there. But um, to look it into more commercialized, I'm looking for those uh, wholesalers, manufacturers to create their own product line with this. You're going to have to take this thing on like Shark Tank. <laughs> we need to create like a, a shed tank. A shed tank. Something. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there for the shed tank. Yeah. Uh, we'll, give, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a whirl and we'll see what we can come up with. Good. Um, I, I love it. It's, you know. A lot of people that tune in to listen uh, to episodes, you know, I, I just kind of want to take the moment that, you know, to, we really like to try to take the time to celebrate the shed hauler, mm-hmm. the shed manufacturer, the shed seller, and those who offer services and those who offer products. Uh, and that's what I love about getting a chance to get out here on a beautiful sunny day in North Carolina and uh, meet a new friend and an innovator. I, I, I appreciate creativity. Um, you know, it, God is a creator. And, and because of that, I, uh, I believe that creativity is, you know, is within us. I think it's, it's who we are as people. Um, so I always love to pick the brain of anybody who's done anything creative. And when those things can affect the shed industry, that's why it's important to have those guests on, uh, to not just talk about their product, but sometimes to talk about a product that can, I mean, I think about if I was a sales guy and I bought one of these, from you and I could show them the unit yeah. and have a simple purchase order. You know, you never know. It might yes. not be, if you're, you might not have to count on your line of manufacturers to carry this. You yeah. just buy one yourself and you show people. And next thing you know, that's right. You're getting a, a sale or you can create just a little bit more revenue out of your sale or an individual revenue source for yourself. Go out and put yes. it on. Send it to them. Call Ares and say, "Hey, I need you to ship this to this guy. We sold this. You know, work your deal. Whatever it is, you know, with with Ares, he'll he'll take care of you." So yeah, and within reasonable distance, right? As I produce it in North Carolina, I'll come to you, right? I'll help you. What mm-hmm. I know about this product itself and what maybe the benefits of it for you to go out there or sell to the customers, educate them what solar energy means, what air ventilation really means. Uh, so I'm I'm here. Yes, call me. Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear the feedback. I'd love to hear those thoughts from those customers. And again, people in the industry that knows way better than me how to make it happen out there. So um, yeah, we, we might as well take the plug while that opportunity seems to make sense to give out your information. Yes. So uh, my e- my website, as I mentioned, is www.mobinosolarsolutions.com. Uh, my email is mobinoeh at gmail.com, or you can call me at 919-924-9203. Uh, 
Uh, that is my cell phone. So definitely reach out at any time, any questions, you can text me there. Uh, and then check out on the website, you'll see the installation. Right now I have a video of installation of a garage. Uh, coming up soon, we'll have an installation video of a shed itself, just to kind of show the different steps over there. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to hear from you guys. And one thing that I've learned in the uh, shed show in Greenville, South Carolina, a few weeks ago, is that everybody sells sheds. But how do they make that extra value to their customer? How do they make it differentiate? Because, mm. I mean, I could go anywhere and just pick one off the, off the shelf. But that's part of the evolution of creating something completely different to your customers and say, hey, this is what we offer from a green energy side. So <laughs> it's just improving your own customer relationship. Well, I don't know if you know this. I, I know that we just became quick <laughs> friends and new friends here. But I've been uh, guilty of saying a little bit over time is that when you work in the industry, uh, what I do is very B2B. Um, I don't, I, I'm working on a way to try to reach the customer, but uh, it's 400 million people yes. in this country. It's, <laughs> do we have geese? Yeah. No way. This is North Carolina. All right. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, we, uh, squirrel, I'm sorry. Right. I got yeah. <laughs> I'm easily entertained, Harris, if you can't, if you can't tell. Yeah, that's um, good. But I've been kind of kind of saying for a long time, you know, it'd be nice to be able to reach the customer, but uh, those within the industry are maybe a little bit more uh, easy to reach when you're trying to discuss product services and, and people's stories within the industry. I, I love the history of the shit industry. I love talking to Steve Byler and finding out about Byler Barnes and how it started and you know, this guy and that guy and how they got started and then they took off. And next thing you know, they're, you know, got a dealer network of 300 people and you're like, what? You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's great to me because it's sort of like that, just that yes ingenuity, you know, that, that just within us, that creativity to, you know, I, I think it's cool. Uh, and I also like to learn from people, success leaves clues. So I like to, yeah. you know, find out, Hey, what drives you? What motivates you? Why, how did you find that success? How do I find it for myself? Um, but we're we're guilty. We're guilty yes. in the shed industry of not being uh, differentiating good enough. And, I think. That's yeah, my, my and, opinion. And I don't think you need to. I mean, differentiate too much. I think you just need to listen, right? Oh, if you listen good. to to your customers, if you listen to what's going on in the in the trending of the market, right? There's those trade shows. There's different events. You meet people. You hear their opinion and thoughts and kind of where these things are going if you listen you you'll learn something i can promise you that uh yeah i'd say i mean the way that i got into this is that you know again we were sitting in the garage and we throw in an idea wouldn't that be nice to have and we said about it for a year and we forgot about it we never did anything with this and then i said you know what remember that idea let's let's take it an extra step let's see where it takes us and it's been a phenomenal ride. I mean, this has been just, uh, I mean, from the feedback, from the, the ingenuity of mm -hmm. things and how people look at, well, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> that that just makes my day. Well, yeah, adding happen. something like this to your line of sheds just kind of sets you apart. I, I can't, you, you actually said you did a test where you measured it at like 15 degrees or so cooler yeah so i bought this uh online uh, kind of sensor that measures the temperature humidity everything in there and it's an application on your phone and i put uh it came with three sensors so i put one in my garage one outside and one in my neighbor's garage that we both face the same way um and during the summer it was a difference of about 10 to 15 degrees lower in my garage than his uh -huh. and we store the same thing we have the same kind of thing same size garage same everything same windows in there uh and i just put two units in my this was before i put in all eight units how you put just two units in there as a prototype and it already made that big of a difference huh that's as good a testimony as i think what you're going to get uh errors i'm i've firm believer that people buy from people they trust the beauty of uh what i like about the podcast it's one of my favorite things is getting to tell people a little bit about who you are and, and why you do what you do so that's why i love the storytelling uh give me a, a little segment into a little bit of the audience view into who eras is uh so i'm originally from israel i've moved here about 
22 or 23 years ago. Okay. And um, I, like I said, I think I said that I, I, I imported natural stone, right? That Jerusalem stone into the U.S. Um, and it kind of started through the East Coast. And all I wanted was really to travel, to get to know the U.S. And in my line of work of importing the natural stone, I covered the entire East Coast, just traveling every week, all week long. And it was a blast. It was just meeting all those people, meeting the different families and, and just like really becoming friends of those people out there and how they started. So um, over time, that's kind of how I did and just believed in, in really this land of opportunities. Uh, because if you set your mind to something, it, it nothing stops you. So it, for me, it was just Amen. seeing those people, how they succeed, whether they're born here, whether they immigrated for, from anywhere out there. It, it, it just really the land of opportunities just to take it out there. And right now I'm exploring to see where this is going to take me. But so far it's been great feedback and it's been just phenomenal to deal with that. Family guy, if I remember. I got three kids. Uh, yeah, going to co- I got one in college already, turning 20 this summer. I got a 16-year-old son that planning to go to college. Uh, he's actually the video creator that you see on my website. Uh, so he's, uh, he's in high school, and he's in a drama class and video, and he's looking to be like a director and all that stuff. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, I said, here's your first project. That's let's, right. Let's do that video. So, That's awesome. Uh, all credit to him. He just came up with everything. I just told him what I wanted, but then he did all the things. So that's been great. And I got a, a 12-year-old daughter. Uh, she's playing volleyball. She's awesome at it. And it's just, daughters are awesome. I mean, they yeah. just teach me a whole new thing about life. Oh, for sure. So, um, uh, yeah, and I married my wife. That I knew her since she was 16. I was 18 at the time. And uh, we've been married ever since, and it's just just been great living over here in North Carolina. Uh, it's, what a great testimony and a a cool just a cool thing. Uh, think back to an early episode. So today, literally today, was the day. This this will um, there's a little bit of time in between um, all the podcasts that are in the queue right now that are edited or being edited and waiting for release and things like that. Today's actually the episode number 100 with Summit Portable Buildings that's coming out. As we're interviewing this, it came out today. That's amazing. Um, And I'm just so excited, thankful. I think back to early on when I think it was Josh Villalobos uh, who said early on, Americans have so many opportunities, sometimes you just need to pick one. Yes. And it was something that stuck with me ever since he said it. You know, our very early episode um thank 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 you for the reminder today uh certainly appreciate that because sometimes it's easy for us to take uh things for granted uh that god does provide and there's wonderful opportunities out there and we just need to go out and chase them and uh yeah thankful that that we live in a place that you know that does that your story is really cool man uh i feel like i'm gonna be the traditional American uh, geek and like ask you all kinds of questions about Israel <laughs> when we get off the air here and just curiosity in my own mind. Yeah. Um, certainly appreciate you uh, being on here. I wish you nothing but success. I hope you get some phone calls Thank uh, you. and that's a shameless plug uh, for you, but you know, I appreciate you being on the show and being my friend and I hope we continue uh, to have a relationship and I hope people reach out to Mobino uh solar solution so Absolutely. i think it's really cool do you mind if i pray uh I'm sure a, i'm a fan of prayer so Absolutely. i just kind of want to end with that lord thank you for the day thank you for opportunity to uh, just be in this beautiful weather I ask that you would uh just bless eras and his family and his company and and uh, every direction that he takes just be uh, uh there to help guide him and guide those that he works with um just thank you for his heart and his kindness and uh, just having a, another friend in the shed industry. Ask that you'd watch over our wonderful industry and the people within it. Uh, bless them as we enter into the spring. Uh, keep us safe and uh, keep ourselves plentiful, God. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Aries with Mobino Solar Solutions. And today we're going to have an install of the Zula system with my dog, Zula, right over here.
going to start taking out those screws, uh, taking the frame out just by opening those screws around here. Take out the window, I'm using this plastic here just to pry it out. And I'm going to start with the installation using the same screws as the um, that held the window in place. We're going to fit them right in there uh, to make it sit tight with the window. So all you do as far as those screws, mount them right into the same spot as the window frame outside. So this completes the inside portion of the unit of the Zula system mounting. Uh, as you can see, we have the unit secured using those screws. We'll go outside right now to do the solar panel installation and come back in for the wire connection. Here we have the solar panel that we're going to use for the outside. Hole over here to get it in the other side when we go back to uh, connect it. completes the installation of the solar panel itself. As you can see, we have some space over here for the airflow to go in and out of the garage. And we'll move into the inside to connect the wires. So now we have the, we move to the inside of the garage uh, to get the wires, the long wires for the solar panel. And we got the power lines for the, so for the fans themselves. I'm gonna, this obviously is too long over here. I'm just gonna cut it shorter to make it work with us. And as you can see, just by touching, they're already starting to work. And this is the on-off switch with the two connectors to it. So this completes the installation of the Zula system. Uh, the ventilation system, we have an on-off button over here uh, to take it on and off as we want as the sun lights up. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to check out our website, mobinumsolarsolutions.com. And we'll look forward to your comments. Thank you.